guys, welcome back to Aquatic Elements. In today's video, I'm gonna do a full run through of the Monster Fish Mega Tank, and I'm also going to do a run through of the Mini Monster Fish Aquarium. So in today's video, I'm gonna be running through the entirety of this system, the fish we've got in it, and I'm gonna be doing the same for the aquarium behind the camera with our Mini Monster Fish in it. Now, I often get loads of questions. How do I keep my fish? How many water changes do I do? What kind of filtration have you got? What fish have you got in the tank? And I thought it was time to do an update on both of my aquariums, running through the entire system and the fish within it. Now I tend to do this kind of video every three months or so, just to have a little recap of both of my systems and also to explain to the new viewers and new subscribers how both of these systems work. So in today's video, first off, we're gonna start with the Monster Fish Aquarium and then we'll move on to that mini Monster Fish Aquarium as well. And we're also gonna be giving both of our aquariums some food and feeding the big monster fish and also our mini monsters as well. So right now we are in front of the Monster Fish Mega Tank. This aquarium measures eight feet long, two and a half feet tall and three feet front to back. It is made of 12 millimeter glass and it has these glass sliding lids on top of the aquarium. So we've got two lids, two lids, two lids, six in total. It's actually sitting on an inch of polystyrene. I often get asked, are you sure your floor can support the weight of this aquarium and you haven't got any insulation or any polystyrene under the tank to even out any imperfections in your floor and I've actually got an inch of polystyrene underneath this and I've, what I've used is a 50 mil black electrical tape like you can see at the top of the tank and I've actually covered up that insulation so you wouldn't even know it's there and these floors are solid concrete there's probably about a meter if not more concrete below this aquarium so it's not going anywhere at all. Another question I regularly get asked is, why is your tank sitting on the floor? Why not put it on a stand? It looks really stupid. Why would you have it like that? And first, the first reason is I like to do things a bit differently. I like to experiment. I like to try new things and find different ways we can keep this hobby and keep our fish because what's the point in doing everything the same as everyone else? Why don't we try something new and see if it works? And I absolutely love this tank on the floor. It works perfectly with the room. If I had this tank on a stand, I'd be blocking the windows and it would be blocking all the natural light and it would look absolutely stupid. And if I had it on the other wall, I would constantly be facing into my apartment, whereas I like to face out and see the outside world. So this tank is on the floor and my sofa is opposite it and because it is two and a half feet tall I have a really nice viewing platform essentially from the sofa. If this tank was two feet tall it probably wouldn't work quite as well but because we've got the height it looks absolutely amazing. This tank holds 1,620 litres and you may also be wondering how on earth are you filtering this? You haven't got a sump or any filtration underneath because obviously it's sitting on the floor and that is where the internal sump comes in. I'm going to head down the other end of the aquarium and show you how that works. Now we are down the other end of the aquarium, you will be able to see this black sort of box which is hidden in the corner of the aquarium. Now I chose to put it into the corner of the aquarium not to detract from the aquascape or any of the fish we have within this tank. The box actually measures 40 centimetres long by 40 centimetres wide and then it is, I believe it's about 74 centimetres tall, 73 centimetres tall and then we also have two weirs on this side and also this side where the water flows over down into that box, it goes down into the bottom and then a pump pumps it out. And you'll be able to see it just in the corner we've got those return pipes where it pumps out of the tank through the UV and then back into the aquarium. This means all of the water is kept within the tank. I haven't got any external canister filters or any external sump filters that could potentially leak, etc. And it's all built within the aquarium. Number one, I did this because I wanted to keep everything within the tank. Obviously, I later on added that UV that is down the side of the tank. But originally, I wanted everything contained within the system so there wasn't going to be any potential leaks. Also, to run it, all I need is a pump. I originally had this as an airlift system where I used an air pump to pump the water back into the system. And it actually worked really, really well, but I did want to add that UV, so I did have to change that to a submersible pump. The water goes over filter fleece, 
down through some sponges and then I've got approximately 35 to 40 kilos now of biomedia in that tank. So there's so much biomedia hidden in that internal sump system. And also it was really, really cheap to construct. I think I paid about 70 quid, 60 quid for the plastic and then about 15 quid for the two weirs on top. So it was really easy and cheap to make as well. And it provides a really nice aesthetic filter for this tank because you don't really see it and most people don't actually notice it. Now heading to the other end of the tank, you'll be able to see our aquascape. So for this aquarium, I chose a huge piece of bog wood. This weighs approximately 60 kilos dry. Uh, goodness knows how much it weighs now, full of water, probably 80 kilos, something around that level. I've also got a couple of boulders just in this end. These are about 10 to 15 kilos each. So I've got two boulders propping that up and then it's resting on the back wall. So I'm not gonna get any movement, even if the fish push into it, etc. they're not gonna be able to move it from where it's positioned. I went for that really minimalistic scape. I've got a few pebbles just at the back. Sometimes I might choose to take a few of those out, but they provide a little bit of a natural sort of fall from the large boulders. And then I chose to go for a white sand. Now, originally I had a tan colored sand with a very, very fine grain size, and it did not work. I had lots of problems with it, but it was good to try because it was a very cheap sand and it was a good cheap alternative, but it didn't quite work with this kind of setup. So I've gone for this gray pewter colored sand and it really helps to elevate the colors of the fish and the light within the tank. So that's the aquascape, that's the tank infiltration. Quick mention of the lights, I get this nearly every single day, but at least once or twice a week. What lights am I using over this tank? Because it is so illuminated, especially at nighttime with only two small LEDs. And these are the AI Hydra 52 HD lights. They are a very expensive reef light, but these are about 12 years old and they're still running pretty well. So, I mean, you kind of get what you pay for when you do get aquarium lights and these have done so, so well. And that is the lights that are illuminating the tank. So we've gone through all of the, not boring bits, but all of the sort of fundamentals of the tank. Now we can focus on the fish and in just a moment, we'll be able to give them some food. So you may see a few different species throughout the video. First up, we've got the Hampala bulbs. Now I've got three of these within the tank. They range from about 10 to 12 inches and they are always splashing me. They are at the feeding times and they are always so aggressive when feeding. You'll also notice we have our super high back Malaysian gold arowana. We have our Hemiarius stormii catfish down the bottom. We also have our Dapnoid, and then we have down in this corner, we have our Fly River Turtle, who's currently having a little rest or a little afternoon nap. And then we also have our Royal Clown Knifefish, which is hiding behind the wood. He is still relatively new to the tank and he's not venturing out just yet. He comes out very, very rarely, but I'm hoping over the next couple of months, he'll get a little bit used to the tank and he'll come out more and we'll be able to see him because he is such a beautiful fish. And then finally, last but not least, we have our albino stingrays. Now we have three albino stingrays in this aquarium. We have two albino pearls, and we also have this albino hybrid, which is a mix between a black diamond albino and an albino pearl. So that's actually a cross stingray, and he's got really, really unique coloration and pattern to him as well. So that is really the whole run through of this aquarium. I think it's time to give the fish some food. So let's get some frozen mussels and frozen prawns defrosted, cut them up, and then we can put them into the tank and check out the fish at feeding time. Now I'm going to feed the monster fish mega tank and in this mug right here, I have some small cold water prawns. I also have some king prawns and also some mussels as well. So I'm just gonna feed them and we can check them out. Now I also do feed, got a bit wet there, but I also do feed the fly river turtle with bananas and also grapes as well. But he will have a good pick at this food that is going along the bottom because he does like some of the mussels and prawns as well. But I'll bring the camera a little bit closer and we can check them out. You can see the barbs go absolutely crazy and just 
got water absolutely everywhere and the arowana is super aggressive as well but i'll bring the camera down now and we can check out the fish feeding down in this corner we have our stingrays we've got our albino pearl which is the newest edition and then we've got our other albino pearl and albino hybrid there you can see quite a lot of the food has gone to the back of the tank and Sheila, our fly river turtle, has just woken up from her nap and is starting to eat some of the prawns that we've put into the tank. So she'll probably wake up now and start swimming around. The stormy eye catfish has got quite a bit of food already and the dapnoid is very, very greedy. He'll go around the tank picking up all of that leftover food. Now, one of the fish we haven't seen is the knife fish, the royal knife fish, which is hiding back there. He still hasn't come out just yet. He's proving a little bit tricky to feed, but hopefully after a few more weeks, he'll start to come out. The Hampala barbs eat so much, they'll just stuff their faces, just like the arowana will as well, eating as much food as possible. And they've really put on some size and weight, actually, since they've been in the tank. But there's quite a bit of food down in that back corner that the fish will slowly pick off over the next five to ten minutes. And that is really it on the feeding of the monster fish mega tank. So I'm going to head over to the other aquarium, the mini monster fish aquarium now. We'll check that out and then we can obviously give that a feed as well. Now we have seen the monster fish mega tank. Let's take a look at the mini monster fish aquarium. So this tank is very small and before you comment, these fish are not going to be staying in here as their forever home. This is simply just a little grow out aquarium. Now the aquarium is a super fish 110 litre tank. So not a big tank by any standards. And inside it, I have a dual BioFlow 3.0 filter with one sponge in the top and then BioHome Media in the bottom. Now, I've probably got around a kilo of BioHome Media in this tank. And then a substrate, I've got a black sand. I believe there's about three to four kilos in there. I've got a few different pebbles and I've got a couple of pieces of bogwood. Now I did have a third piece of bogwood, but I've decided to actually remove that, give the fish a little bit more swimming area. And then I've simply got the Superfish Scaper light above the tank to illuminate it. Really nice, simplistic tank. I may decide to put a few plants in here. I'm considering putting a couple of Java ferns or maybe some Anubias in here just to add a little bit of greenery. But the fish seem really happy and healthy. I've got five Datnoids in here, Datnoides microlepis. I have got the African tiger fish, the Vitatus tiger. And then there also is hidden in there a clown knife fish, a very small clown knife fish who still is not that confident in coming out similarly to the royal clown knife i have in the large aquarium so that is really it on this aquarium let's give the fish some food and let's check out the dapnoids and the tiger fish eating i'm really hoping to grow these guys on I'm not sure if i'm going to keep the tiger fish or the clown life on a long-term basis but i'm potentially hoping that i can grow these dapnoids out over the maybe the next six or 12 months and then actually hopefully put them into the monster fish mega tank once they are a bit bigger but let's give them some food i'm going to give them some bloodworm today and we can check them out feeding now i'm just going to give the dapnoids the tiger fish and the clown knife fish some bloodworm so i've just got some bloodworm defrosting in this little glass cup, as you can see here. So you can see the datnoids are obviously very used to me feeding them because four of them are already up the top waiting for their food. Now, apologies about the lighting. I don't know if I can move it at all because it, no, you can't really see too well on camera with this lighting, um, but I'm just gonna pour this in. Um, you'll be able to see the datnoids go crazy for those blood worms. And the tiger fish also picks them up as well. Now the clown knife that's in here doesn't come out too much, but hopefully you'll be able to see him on the camera. But normally he comes out towards the end of feeding and has a little pick through what's left in the tank. But the datanoids are definitely putting on a little bit of weight since I got them. There are five in here, as I mentioned. I'll bring the camera a little bit closer and we can have a sort of close look at those. Now, as you can see, they are just picking up all of those bloodworms off the bottom. Now, I am giving them a whole cube. At the beginning, I was only giving them about half a cube, but they are starting to eat more as they're getting a little bit bigger. And then we've got our African tiger fish there as well. 
so you can see them just picking all of those bloodworms off the bottom and I'm assuming these guys are going to probably be staying in this aquarium especially the datnoids probably for the next three or four months something like that until they get big enough for an upgrade you can't see the clown knife he's somewhere in that in that bit of wood somewhere in there just hiding away so unfortunately we're not going to be able to see him on the video but you can see they really go to town on those bloodworms looking really really nice I chose some with as clean bars as possible most of them are about five bars none of the really super high expensive high-end ones but that is feeding time on the mini monster fish aquarium so probably going to wrap up the video there but if you do have any questions about this aquarium just leave those down below and that is it for today's video hopefully you've enjoyed seeing the monster fish mega tank and our mini monster fish aquarium how both tanks run and the inhabitants they have within them if you do have any questions or anything that i haven't covered in this video then you can let me know down in that comment section and if you have any video suggestions or videos that you'd like me to cover you can also let me know down below but that's it for today's video thank you all for watching remember to keep those water changes up and happy fish keeping Thing.